Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today we are joined by Fiona and she is going to introduce us to the Photography Retreat, a weekend of recalibrating creativity, learning to slow down and observe, creating photography that your clients will love whilst enjoying the beauty of Wales. We're going to be discussing everything from awards today to what makes great photography and how the photography retreat is all about nurturing creativity. So Fiona, welcome back to the webinar series. Lots of exciting plans to talk about. Yeah, I know. It's great, isn't it? I think it's been a couple of exciting weeks in the industry's calendar. So um, I'm hoping that the photography retreat will be a new addition to, um, to our calendars. And uh, yeah, the future's bright. Well, it's, you know, spring is in the air as I look outside the window at this time, you know, and it feels like, you know, the, the world, world is waking up again. And, you know, there's so many exciting plans out there. Uh, and, you know, the photography tree is definitely one of them uh, that, that we're, we're really looking forward to. We're going to get into uh, some details about the photography retreat and how it's, it's there to really help photographers feel a lot more creative and giving them uh, the space to be creative as well. And, um, you know, be, be around like-minded photographers uh, to, to, to uh, excel in all those areas. Yes. Um, but, but, you know, today, as you, we kind of mentioned, you also want to talk about the awards and, uh, you know, how, how being a, to be a better photographer and all that kind of stuff and how that leads into the retreat as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I was just saying before we came on um, that the last time I entered into uh, any awards was uh, 2018, and that was the year that I got my fellowship. So entering into uh, the 20 by 16 competition this year was, uh, it was it was an interesting uh, step. <laughs> so, so, so what were you feeling and thoughts going into that kind of then? Well, do you know, I think that you learn a lot. Um, once you get through to your fellowship, you learn an awful lot about how to present and how to uh, push forward um, and how you want to use the awards as a way of elevating your profile, but also elevating your photography, because it certainly does make you stop and think about what you're doing. Um, and when you're working in a fast paced environment, like a wedding or, you know, even if you're in a, a calmer space like a portrait studio you still have to start thinking um outside of the box to create those award-winning images so it's really really tough so um i did quite well <laughs> <laughs> i've got my no goals unfortunately but plenty of uh, excellence and, and plenty of merits which i'm really pleased about because it's not easy at all no um, it's not not easy but it, it's there to push yourself as well at the same time it's um you know, so so get getting those and it's progression as well at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, totally. I mean, when I was there, I was like, right, next year goals, that's for sure. You know, I've got plans to create shoots and, uh, uh, you know, push myself even further. And that is that is so I mean, even for, um, you know, judges and uh, mentors within the um, societies, these photographers never sit still. They're constantly pushing themselves to be the best and stay at the very top, and that becomes um, chat. That becomes a challenge because you've got to be original and you've got to be unique, and so it's constantly pushing yourself all the time. And that's the beauty of photography, right? Hmm. Yeah, definitely, hundred um, percent. So you said you got some awards. How did that kind of make you feel afterwards? So you, you put in a bit of nerves, put it, put it back in, especially after a few years. Yeah. And then you see, you see the prints hanging. It's, it's, a, it's a great feeling, isn't it? It's a really good feeling. Not so good listening to the uh, dog <laughs> touching. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was really, really good. To see them hanging on the wall um, was fantastic. And, uh, you know, I think the, the great thing about live judging is that you learn so much. You, mm. you learn about, um, you know, the structure of, of an image and how to improve it. And, you know, you go away with heaps of knowledge just from listening to a panel of judges talk about your print. Um, so yeah, I was delighted. I was really, really delighted. It was a fantastic week. It, it was uh, so nice to see people, be with people, laugh and share stories and listen to great music. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's just great to be back in that position where, where we can do stuff like uh, that again. And the, you know, there's there's lots of different courses and you know trade shows coming back up again, which is amazing. Uh, yeah. But you were saying about listening to the feedback on your own image, but it's also great to listen back to the feedback on other images. You know, so uh, you know, I, I was um, floating around the twenty by sixteen and. I could see people going into rooms that maybe that's not a genre they shoot. So a wedding photographer yeah. going into the nature one, yeah. uh, the natural world side, on, and listening to the comments from that side of it as well, which, uh, you know, it, I, I truly believe that you can expand your knowledge, even if you're you're not a nature and wildlife photographer, you, you know, but if you listen to, to you know, the judges talking about those images, you can use those comments on your own photography, yeah. uh, even if it's not your your photograph or your style, you can, you can still gain so much information. Yeah, you can. And I think if COVID has done anything for us photographers, it has made us actually um, embrace many genres of photography, uh, specialising in one, but definitely um, taking on other other work that um, has become available. And um, I, for one, you know, wedding and portrait is my my bread and bread and butter. But during COVID, I was doing uh, I was I was working for a company. This is going to sound completely um, uh, off the wall because actually I was uh, photographing event, events. Okay. Now the event was for um, a fintech company based in um, Bangor actually, I was in Wales for a wee bit, um, Nottingham and in London and they were there creating events to draw people back to the office. So this was at the back end of last year when um, the lockdowns were becoming a lot more softer and they were trying to encourage people back to the office. So I was actually uh, taking on that work. Now I'm gonna go off and do headshots for these guys at the end of April. Um, I've got uh, people asking me about product photography, um, which means I have to learn with new kit. Um, this guy wants me to shoot with a tilt and shift camera. I've never, I've never used this before, but going into the awards and seeing product photography and asking my peers about, you know, this particular camera and lens and et cetera, lens rather than camera. It makes us stretch ourselves. It pushes our boundaries. It gives us confidence. And, and going into the 20 by 16 and listening to all of the judges and all of the different categories and stuff, yeah, you pick up so much knowledge. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. I mean, one of the things we, we wanted to talk about in this webinar, and maybe mm -hmm. we're going on a little bit earlier than, than expected, but it's a nice uh, lead on from what you're just saying, you know, is uh, what, what it takes to make a great image. So you were saying you're shooting events and then you do going back and doing headshots and then you're doing commercial, you know, so the, I suppose the question is, what, what does it take to make a great image? And do, do you find that those skills that you can transfer from one to the other to the other uh, help when, when doing uh, different genres like that? Yeah, so um, certainly with product photography, it, you're, all, you're in a very controlled environment. Um, and my rule of thumb when I'm shooting anything is actually the 10 elements um, that the judges use to, um, uh, you know, critique an image. Um, because actually those elements are there to guide us and make strong photography. So even if you're a portrait photographer, um, you know, you can take those, you can take all of that knowledge and transfer it to product. You need to get the lighting right. You need to tell a story. You need to create an impact and you need to um, hit a brief as well within all of those things. Um, so I think that all our skills are transferable from one genre to another. It's just how we um, embrace it. It's literally, literally just how we embrace it. I did a, a beautiful um, shoot the other day um, for a client who wanted uh, uh, shots for her website. But do you know what? I thought, okay, so uh, brand photography is right on point at the moment. It's everywhere. All photographers are uh, dipping their toe in it. You know, it's midweek work. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. And I thought to myself, right, I want to make something which is more than just a brand shot. I want to create something editorial. I want to create something which is going to satisfy my creative soul. But it's also going to create a very striking image that they can be proud of, which can go into one of their industry magazines. And sure enough, we were able to pull that off using those, using the elements of photography that us judges have to, um, you know, reflect on every day. So yeah, it's great. 
So you're you're thinking of those those ten elements, and anybody who's watching, we we can post up a link in the comments afterwards, uh, a, a, a link to where the ten elements are, so you can have a look for them and explain mm -hmm. each element in detail. But you, you're thinking of those ten elements as you're going out to take pictures as well, then. Yeah, yeah, definitely, all the time, all the time. Even if I'm doing, um, I've got here in my uh, office around here, I've got a studio area here which. I won't show you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's semi organized. Um, but it's it's with flat boards and there's a window light. Uh, and every time I put um, somebody in that area there to photograph, I'm always thinking of those elements. And this is something that I want to talk about, especially within the uh, photography retreat. And when we are away at the um, weekend in April, we have to shoot within boundaries. We're always shooting within boundary whether we are in a wedding whether we're an event whether we're doing a product we we have we have the we the, we have these boundaries that you know we can't we, we we can't shoot outside of you know we're restricted to our environment so for example if you're photographing a wedding and you're it's raining outside for example well that's one boundary gone you can't go outside it's absolutely you know, hammering it down, the bride's not going to be interested in one iota. So what do you do? Suddenly you're changing that boundary. So you have to find somewhere inside the location, the venue to shoot. And then you're restricted because the light might be poor or the background might be poor. So we it, it's constantly challenging us as creatives to be able to create beautiful, stunning photography, but within a boundary. So that's something that we're going to really hone in on um, next, uh, it's not next weekend, is it? It's the end of April. Mm. Uh, well, I, this is probably quite a hard question to answer maybe, but, uh, and by the way, if anybody's got any questions, then please post them oh, in yeah. the comments. Uh, and yeah. we're more than happy uh, to, to talk about them uh, as this is, quite an informal webinar today so you know please do post your your questions in the comments um but i suppose my question would be you know we we, we put on courses all the time on uh, the lighting or posing and they can be very structured but um one thing what's really intriguing me about the retreat is it's it's quite focused on the creativity side so how, how do you find yourself how, how do you become creative when you when you're in that mindset you know so as you say it's raining outside right i need to think right i've got to do something inside how, where, where does that creativity come from good question it's, 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 a, it's a really t and it, it, there, there might not be an answer it might be different for everyone but um it's it's a it's a really interesting question to ponder isn't it it is it is and i tell you what it does it it comes from experience it comes from experience it comes from years of experience it comes from years of experimenting it comes from years of making mistakes um to the point where your photography then becomes just part of who you are hmm. and you walk into a room any room anywhere and it becomes instinctual instinctive instinctual <laughs> it becomes part it, it, it's another part of you so you're able to read light more you're able to uh read an environment more you kind of think right i want to bring in this graphic element so how am i going to do that you know when you're looking at a bride's dress or you're looking uh to get emotion across in a portrait how are you going to do that how are you going to direct how are you going to connect how are you going to use your hands? How are you going to use the body? And this is stuff that, you know, is ingrained in me now. Um, and it's a very interesting thing. So I think we've spoken about this before in the last webinar. When mm. I was pushing to go towards my wedding uh, fellowship, I hit a glass ceiling. And I couldn't, I couldn't get through it. It's, I call it a creative glass ceiling. I couldn't, I couldn't smash the thing apart. It was awful. Very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I just took myself off and uh i just i just went on a a, a path of self-discovery i wanted to find out who i was and you know why i was having these difficulties and and doing something like that doing personal projects really really helps to hone those skills hmm. yeah yeah uh, sorry to put you on the, the spot a little bit with that question but a great answer and I suppose also, I suppose inspiration feeds into creativity as well, doesn't it? So whether that's going and looking at art galleries or looking at the photographer's work or, uh, you know, even graphic design and stuff like that, you can take inspiration and that feeds into your creativity as well. 
Oh, God, yeah. Certainly, um, you know, graphic design, certainly when you're in uh, an interesting environment where the light is so striking. So if I just hit, I'm going to just hit uh, on the slide, Colin, just to talk about this image, because this is a very graphic image. So this won me a merit up at the uh, 20 by 16. Now, this was shot in somebody's hallway uh, on some stairs during the bridal preparation. And it's just so the light created a graphic uh, shape and environment for me to work in. I could not resist, um, you know, placing the bride in this light. So, you know, we're looking for elements that we can bring in that are going to enhance our photography. So certainly when we're talking about graphics, then, you know, look at your environment look at what can you try to bring in you know like a maybe a door frame maybe um some fabric from the the veil you know maybe um some curtains you can do something quite interesting with curtains and so you know you're starting to think outside the box most certainly and when you're looking at film and you're looking at movies start looking at how they light sets and how how that light is is yeah. being used because you can take that and you can bring that into your own photography make something very cinematic um and very filmic and actually this is all about um pushing yourself and taking yourself from l to a to f because what happens is okay so l's all about kind of like rubber stamping yep i'm a professional photographer i'm insured and i'm charging for my work brilliant fantastic and then as you start going for your a well we want to start to see who you are you know we want to see are you using graphic elements you know are you uh, understanding light more what's your style and then when you go for f you're really refining who you are as a photographer and your style so again this is the sort of stuff that we're going to be talking about at the photography retreat which is actually you know all very much about um recalibrating as you said at the beginning colin um who recalibrating creativity um exactly. so, so so sorry go on i'm rambling i, I, I was just going to say we, we have just had a question come in off uh lizzie just before we jump on to to those questions if it's all right to um to answer mm -hmm. Uh, so I have so many ideas, but struggle to get them out uh, and into an image. Do you ever write things, draw or write things down? Yes. Yes is the answer to that. I've got a little notebook, which is here, which I've had for years. My little red book. Uh, and when I first started, I'll see if I can find, you probably won't be able to see it on the screen here, but all of these are my notes from from photographing weddings and stuff there'll be some you won't be able to see because of the light but you can see that there's some sketches here uh they're little they're tiny little sketches you probably won't be able to see because the light's so poor but yeah you can just about see them yeah you get the idea anyway yeah, yeah and i would take that out with me um so when i had five minutes in a wedding i'll be like okay i've lost my inspiration you know it's all too crazy and i'll pick up my book and I'd refresh my memory. And for every wedding, there is a different concept because everyone's different. Every dress is different. Every bride is different. Every groom is different. What they're wearing is different. The environment is different. So yeah, hundred percent. And then what else I what else I used to do was I would um, print out my photography. And I would actually I've done it here. I print out my photography. This is the shot that I was talking about. And I scribble notes on it. What do I like about it? What don't I like about it? And how can I prove it for next time? And that is how I work all the time. Fantastic. So, yeah. so great advice there. Yeah. So, so, yeah, do. Just draw things down and write things down and keep them somewhere safe. I was going to say, I, um, I, I know uh, David Edmondson's watching. Uh, and David and Luke did a webinar, uh, which, which, again, is in the archive. And, uh, you know, people can go and watch that. And they, they talked about that process of, you know, really nailing the idea, doing, you know, doing drawings and getting the idea on paper before doing the shoot, you know, and that's so some of the images that you see, you know, that get merits and get hung on the 20 by 16, uh, you know, in the exhibition. It's because there's so much pre-thought that's gone into it. Uh, and sometimes getting the ideas out of your head onto paper just really refines the idea, um, you know, and then I, I suppose, again, that feeds into the creativity side of it because mm. you, you've kind of got it out of your head onto paper so you can start imagining it more 
mm. and, and then that releases your uh, your mind to be more creative you know in the moment as well yeah absolutely and this is something else that we touch on um it's about slowing down it's about um you know especially yet again you know when we're in a, a wedding environment it's so fast paced you know and i think that um what digital photography did for photographers was it made photographers just put the finger on the button and go for the whole for the whole wedding and then walk away with the thousands of images that they then had a headache to uh, go through and edit um but actually by slowing down and reading your environment and being prepared and organized um taking control of your environment and your clients you can slow down and you can create the images that you want to create and that allows you to have headspace to start thinking creatively as well do you know that's that's probably so true as well you know because you go back to the film days and uh you know before anybody took a picture they, they would have to think of the whole picture and how it's going to look like at the end because every time you, you process the film it costs money and then you'd have to do yeah. the transparencies which cost more money and you know that all came out of the bottom line of, of your business so it was really important to take that time to make sure the image was right before you hit it. Uh, and you're right, you know, it's it's very easy with digital photography just to, uh, um, you know, spray and pray, as they say. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, t sometimes just taking that taking that time to think about how you want it to look and how it's going to end and what's the final image going to look. And, again, that feeds into saving yourself time in the end because you've not got thousands of images to, to look at in post-production. And if you've taken that time also, there's probably less post-production to do on the image because you've probably dealt with some of the little errors that would have been, uh, you know, you've had to Photoshop out or whatever because you've sorted it because you've taken the time to think about the image as well. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And it, it go, goes back to that question that the uh, person was asking about um, uh, pre-planning and drawing out images as well. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when we start as wedding photographers, we rely a lot on lady luck. Mm. to you know and that that is that you know just put your finger on the button and just pray you're going to get through the wedding uh and not uh lose a shot or miss a shot or anything else and i think that when you are in that mindset it stops you from being creative um and you just kind of think oh what the hell and just go for it and then that's how we just get all stressed and you you know we get all kind of worked up and that's why people don't enjoy photographing weddings because actually they're not in control of the uh, the situation and the environment, and and they're not shooting within that boundary. So they miss they then they don't understand the you know the, the 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 boundaries that they're in. So yeah, good question. Good question. Yeah, they're, they're very good question. So again, you know, any more questions? Please put yeah. some in the comments because. Uh, as I said, this is a, quite an informal uh, webinar, so please do uh, shoot away in the comments. Uh, I'll bring the slides back up now because um, we, we're kind of leading on to this this, this uh, second slide about the retreat. So do you want to take it from there? Yeah, so, you know, I think that over the last few years, what COVID has done has, has kind of like crippled us as creatives because of the stress and the environment that we're in. And I think a lot of people I've been speaking to, certainly at the convention, there was this feeling of, you know, feeling stuck and, you know, lost mojo and they couldn't find inspiration uh, to pick up their camera again. And there was a lot of frustrations. And so the weekend is really going to help people just recalibrate and you know we, you know get excited again and and uh, you know feel really inspired for the for the year ahead um so if any of these questions are uh relevant to you you know you want to uh reach your creative potential when you're directing you feel a little lost for words and you're not you're not getting your what's in your mind you're not kind of translating through and you're struggling to shape with light then this is all this is all the things that we're going to be uh working on at the retreat um so um when you come away from the retreat which is this is Ruthin castle beautiful north wales um north wales well wales in general i mean what a beautiful country i just adore it and uh being up uh 
being up in North Wales last year, just I just wanted to stay. <laughs> I, just wanted to stay. <laughs> I didn't want to come home. But, but uh, you know, so we, we, we found this wonderful location, um, very uh, recommended uh, by Terry. So thank you very much, uh, Terry, if you're uh, listening. Thank you, because we are so excited to be here. What a beautiful place to experiment, to unwind, to... Um, you know, talk about photography, practice photography. Uh, and what's great about the retreat is um, well, hopefully we'll have the beautiful fee working uh, with us. Um, but I want um, the delegates, I want you guys to be shooting yourselves. I want you guys to team up and I want you to photograph and the reason each other. And the reason for that is because as beautiful it is working with a model and the outstanding shots that you create, it's not real. It's just, it's just not real. Uh, I want you to be able to really understand about hand placement. And then when you ask a model to place their hand, even if they put it in a really ugly way, it will always look beautiful. <laughs> it will always look elegant. It will always look lovely. Um, and so I really want to push you outside of your comfort zone. Um, so we're going to learn about directing um, your clients and about controlling light um, and learning how to slow down. Um, so you're going to walk away just feeling totally ready for the year ahead. I think I think what's important to say about the the retreat as well um, is, is that you, you've created this really safe space as well, where people can can feel, you know they they can go out and be creative and. Uh, you know they're, they're going to have guidance, and um, it, it's it's going to be a really uh, a really positive place to be mm -hmm. that you can uh, let your creativity run, you know, r run wild and yeah. try things that you might not get the chance to try. Uh, and as I say, it's a, it's a very safe space to do that, uh, and you know, it's it's going to be um, it's going to be a really really good uh, couple of couple of days up in Rithin. So uh, yeah. I think that's re really important to emphasise as well really important to emphasize and I think that we're all quite vulnerable creatures creatives because when we're creating something we're putting ourselves into it and and then the result is there to be critiqued um so this is a very safe place and we want you to make mistakes we don't expect anyone to be perfect we're, no one's perfect even even you know like I said before even judges and mentors who are at the top of their game you know they're still refining their photography on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and and what this is about is is getting you guys into that uh, mindset that it's okay to miss a shot it's okay to not hit your uh, creative potential uh, at that point that you uh, press the shutter because what you're doing is you're learning hmm. you're learning and then you kind of walk away and you go oh it didn't work out why didn't it work out you analyze you realize what you needed to do and then when you go back to take it again it's there hmm. Definitely. Yeah, really important. I mean the other thing about with it being a safe space is you know one of your questions on your last slide was you know if you've lost your mojo and I know sometimes when when you've lost your, your your mojo for something, it's really hard to get back into it sometimes, uh, and and you, you you don't want to be trying to run that mojo off, you know, at a, at a wedding or something like that. You, they, they, this is a great place where you can let all those tensions kind of release, and that that you know, in that safe space, uh, I think that's another you know important thing. So if you have, you know, you've lost your mojo a bit, or you're struggling to to find that creativity, then you know it's it's. Um, it's going to be a great place to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And all it takes is a conversation. You know, why why have you lost your mojo? What what is the reason? Yes, okay, we've gone through COVID and it's really affected all of us. Um, so let's let's embrace it and let's go right. Okay, well, let's park that now and let's pick up the camera and let's see if we can create something outstanding and push yourself. Do a personal project. Don't put yourself under any pressure take the camera off and go do still life, do portraits, do um, do something else, you know, do landscape or architecture, just do something which ignites a passion in you. And who knows, you know, it could go on to creating a panel. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, and, and the great thing at Riffin Castle, there is plenty of opportunities to, to try different things out. Um, you know, you can see from the image there, it's a, 
a beautiful building, but that's just the building. That there's there's lots of grounds around, and if we've got the glorious weather like we've got today, uh, just a couple of miles up the road, then uh, it, it it would be a brilliant place to get out in the grounds and, and practice as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the um, I, I haven't put the um, times on here, but we actually twenty second of April is a Friday, um, and so everyone uh, comes together for drinks in the evening. Um, and if you are up early, um, go out into the grounds on the Saturday, go and uh, explore those grounds, take your camera out, go and uh, take some um, images, uh, landscape work, uh, and come back and show me. Um, you know, show me what you've done, uh, you know, talk to me, tell me where you're struggling, tell me where you want to go, you know. Um, there are limited spaces, but there's plenty of time for us to talk one to one. Um, bring your work down. I want to see uh, images that you love, images that you uh, feel that you haven't quite achieved. Um, and I'm there to help. I'm there to give you uh, portfolio reviews. I'm there to um, get you to uh, shoot uh, and photograph each other, shooting within a boundary pushing you outside of your comfort zone. It's all about just having some fun and just relaxing and talking about photography. So when you walk away, you feel like you've actually learned something and you feel rejuvenated and feel excited about what you can do. Amazing. And and, and that's another benefit of, of, of going on courses like this. It's not just the uh, it's not just the educational um, you know, uh, point. It's also the, the the social aspect, and then that night sitting around talking about uh, you know different parts of photography, and as you say, portfolio reviews and stuff like that. It's uh, uh, you know, and getting that one to one time is really important, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, and I think the um, you know we, we, the internet's brilliant. We, you know, we can watch a video and we can learn something. That's great, but how do you how do you refine it? If you're not in an environment with an expert to help you refine it, you just end up stumbling, you know, uh, and it will take you, what is it, a thousand hours to to uh, become um, exceptional at what you do. So, you know, you can, I'm not saying that that's going to be reduced by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly if you if you've seen a lighting technique that you want to you want to try you know then with windows and natural light and reflectors then let's try and shape light let's get it let's let's do this hands-on you'll learn more in a hands-on environment than you will by watching a video yeah i do you know i was just gonna say we, we were just talking about this just before we went live about the difference between uh watching online training and the difference with hands-on training now i think they both have their their place uh, you know uh certainly over the last couple of years we've we've been very fortunate to put on some great webinars but th there's nothing quite like getting hands-on with a group of other like-minded photographers uh with, with a trainer there a model there and all the equipment that you can ask questions and you go well do you know what 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 will happen if we turn the light that way how will it look different in the camera what, what would it look like if we soften the light by feathering it? How does that, you know, and you can actually try it there, there, and see the results straight away. Yeah, um, absolutely, because you're in that environment with everything ready to experiment with. Exactly, um, yeah. Again, well, online courses are great, and, um, you know, the future for the photography retreat is to have a bank of online courses which, which people can access as well. Um, but the two, like you say, they're very complementary and they work together. But we have to have these face to face events. We have to have on, um, uh, you know, training events where people can come together and share. Because I think also we can lo losing our mojo. You know, you're not going to get that reignited, um, you know, through being on your own in a room. Uh, you know, watching videos. You need to be out. You need to be with people. You need to be inspired. You need to talk through your ideas. <clears throat> you know. I mean. Well, we we saw that at the convention, didn't we? You know, uh, as you say, you know, lot, lots of people have had um, had had a tough couple of years, uh, and you know, they got to the convention. You could see straight away as people started turning up for the uh, the Tuesday and the Wednesday, the the enthusiasm starting to come back, you know, into people, and uh, you know, getting a real passion for photography again. And you know that 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 you know the, the convention's a big event, uh, but you know, on a, the you know the um, the more intimate 
retreats like this one, uh, again, that that's it, it's almost more you you get more inspired because you're you're right in the thick of it and you're with everyone and you're sharing ideas. And then even when you're going to go go and grab a coffee halfway through the day, you're talking about what you've done in the morning and then what you're going to do in the afternoon. And um, you know, it's it's a, a they're, they're fantastic places really to um, to 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 give yourself. Um, some positivity and uh, uh, and really reignite that fire again. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. One word: passion. You know, we are a bunch. We are creatives. We are passionate people. All photographers are passionate people. And when you get all those photographers in one room, it doesn't matter how many. <laughs> you know, there is a lot of fun. There is a lot of chat and laughter. There's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of passion. And uh, you know, that makes for a really nice, inspiring environment where you know we can learn and feed off each other you know yeah i'm really i'm just so excited for it you know it's gonna be great and i think you know even if it's you know it's wales so it might be raining right <laughs> uh, but, but even if it is look at that beautiful location we are going to have so many beautiful rooms to shoot in that you know what they've got spa area and there's this beautiful floor and a fantastic roll top bath you know, just I'm just thinking. Do you think we'll be able to get in there somehow? <laughs> <laughs> and that's interesting as well. So go out. You know, go out, have a look around the grounds, find an environment that you want to shoot in. What you make it complicated, make it difficult. It doesn't matter. I want it to be complicated. I want it to challenge you, um, and see what we can create. Amazing. I did. Amazing. So, uh, should we move on to the next slide? I'm not too sure what the next slide is. Let's find out. <laughs> well, it's just about what to bring. Um, okay. And that, it's, it's that simple. Um, all you need is one camera and one lens, and that is it. Any, any preference on lens or focal length or anything? Or No, that's your boundary. <laughs> <laughs> that is your what are you going to shoot with? My go-to lens is uh, twenty-four to seventy because that gives me the most um, versatile range, right? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I have prime lenses that I do use, of course. I've got uh, seventy to two hundred that I also use, but twenty-four to seventy is uh, my happy place. Um, and um, you know, for the majority of the work that I shoot, I shoot on that. But uh, I know that some people really love just prime so if you're working with a prime lens your favorite lens in your kit bag then bring it but one camera one lens that is the boundary and that is your challenge awesome and and is that for any specific reason to keep it so so minimalistic is it um uh, to, to 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 make those creative juices flow or create a challenge or, or, or you know what's what's the, the reason behind that because it's about simplicity this is about understanding your environment. This is about what you're shooting in. And you have to see through your lens to be, to be able to create something. It's a boundary. You have to shoot within that boundary and create something beautiful. Amazing. And it's a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a challenge. <laughs> so lighting-wise, because we've not mentioned anything on the lighting-wise, are you, are you looking to do mainly natural light or is there going to be the option to, to use some, some flashes there? Or um, We're not using flashes. Um, okay. we, are all, we are using um, window light um, only and reflectors. Awesome. I'll, I'll bring the reflector. You don't need to bring the reflector. That's, <laughs> That's on your kit list, not on theirs. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. My, my kit list is a little bit bigger than everyone else's. <laughs> Not really. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah no, that that sounds like a, a really good challenge, and and um, you know that that will really get the creative juices flowing because you know by having lots of options, sometimes uh, you know it's like going to a restaurant and seeing a massive menu, and you don't know what to choose because there's so much to choose from. Where you know you go to a restaurant and they have a smaller menu, you know what to go for straight away. So you know sometimes by having you know less is more, isn't it? Less is more. It's about keeping it simple. Um, and it's about working with what you've got, um, the environment that you have and the light that you have. Um, and one thing that I've learned as a wedding and portrait photographer is that, and I work on my own, I, I don't have an assistant um, who comes with me. So I have to um, use what I have and what I can manage. Um, 
and uh, you know artificial light is is beautiful and what you can do with um, studio lighting and strobes is is incredible um, I, I don't have to, I don't have the time and I don't have the assistance to help um, with that type of lighting so I only use window light on on and that's on uh, weddings and shoots you just use okay. natural light shoot so my my little studio corner here natural light um i have two flat boards um uh they're painted uh, black and i've got a white wall and i just I, I i manipulate the the light and shape i shape the light the the shadow and the light using those boards and reflectors bouncing in um i would show you <laughs> 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 um but uh, yeah, it needs a little bit of topping up down there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, right? Um, we will I'll demonstrate all of that at the at the retreat. How sure. we can create light and and um, shadow using win window light. I think that sometimes with window light, we fit, we we fall into this um, ease of just broad lighting, you know, or flat lighting. Just put the person in front of the window, have this beautiful diffused light coming across them. They're going to look gorgeous. It's going to take years off them. It will, and it will look gorgeous. But to be creative with light and with window light, it's good to have some shadow coming in because it enhances someone's face. It can really be quite flattering. And if we get it right, you know, you can do beautiful uh, 90 degree light, Rembrandt lighting, um, you know, uh, broad lighting, depending. Um, you know, so there are so many different techniques that we can use that you would use in a studio that we're going to use with a window. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, and again, that, that's, that's going to push boundaries because it's going to, it's going to make you think about how to direct that light and how to use it, how to make a a window light, how to make it soft, and how to you know and to use all those techniques that yeah. you know um, it, it will be a really interesting uh, you know exercise to do. Yeah, absolutely, because it's all about placement. Yeah. I Perfect. <laughs> we, we shall we move on to the next slide. I think, I think we've uh, all oh right. So yeah, so this is um, for uh, the societies. Uh, if you if you guys are members, which of course you all are, then there is a discount. Um, so you are uh, welcome uh, to book as soon as you can. Come on board. Um, I have got these lovely uh, cards here, uh, which I'm going to be giving away to you guys when you come down to the retreat as well. Just open it up, it's in an envelope to keep it nice and safe. So when you sign up, um, you will get a pack of cards. And on them, there's loads that you won't be able to see because the light's bouncing off them. But these are inspirational cards that you can take away with you. It's all about uh, the elements of photography, impact, composition, lighting, pose, story, and style. So as soon as you sign up, you've already got something. So you'll bring these with you to the retreat and we can work on these throughout the day. They're here, they're ready for you, they're to inspire you. Um, so as soon as you book up, um, I shall get these in the post so you have got something to work with straight away. Um, Amazing. So uh, yeah, and as you've got that lovely discount as well for, for the members. And that's food included as well. So that's your hotel, that's your accommodation, that is food and light refreshments throughout the day, which awesome. is first lunch and dinner. So I know, I know you mentioned it before, uh, but it, obviously it's in a few weeks' time at the end of April. Yeah. So for 5.50, that's going to cover you from the Friday evening to the Sunday. And, and within, and I know we've not got the timeline to hand, but uh, the rough timeline of the retreat goes as? Yeah, I can show you. So, uh, well, I can't show you because I'm not sharing screens, but on the retreat's website, you, if you jump on there, you will see the timeline. So just to run through, so arrival at Ruthin Castle um, on the 22nd in the afternoon, um, it's yours, okay? So you've got this beautiful environment um to enjoy uh one second so i don't lose you there you go um 
check in and um, really um, utilize that, the ground, familiarize yourself, go for a spa, treat, spa treatment, you know, uh, have afternoon tea, relax and get into the uh, weekend. Um, there will be drinks in the evening from um, five o'clock, uh, five, five till um, 10, we've got drinks, welcome drinks and dinner. This is a great opportunity for us just to get to know each other. Let's talk, let's find out where you're at on your photographic journey. Where do you want, to, have you just started out? Um, are you, um, you know, at your A level, you know, are you associate wanting to go for your F? Are you, um, you know, where are you? What do you want? What do you want for your creative goals? What do you want to do? So very much about just getting to know each other. Um, and then on the Saturday on the 23rd, um, it's going to be a theory based morning so we're going to be about 9 30 in the morning um and we're going to have a nice coffee and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about all things photography we're going to talk about reading light refining posing shooting within a boundary and what that means how we're going to bring all of those elements together so after lunch you can go out and you can go and shoot i'm there in the afternoon to help um to guide you to uh, offer assistance. We've got the beautiful fee as well. Hopefully she can get the time off work. Um, and we're gonna team up, we're gonna have groups and we're gonna, we're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot. And then in the afternoon, when you come back, um, we are gonna have a look at what you've achieved. We're gonna have a look. So if you want to bring a laptop and a drive and you wanna dump stuff on, yeah, for sure, you know, bring that, let's have a look. Or if you just wanna show me off the back of the camera, that's also fine. But we want um, we want you to use this time to push your creative boundary and to create something that you wouldn't necessarily create. And then we want to talk about it. What did you find difficult? What did you really enjoy about it? What was your challenges? You know, where did you find your strengths? Where did you find your weaknesses? Um, and that leads on into the evening where uh, we've got dinners and drinks uh, again. So we're all going to be, um, you know, again, just sharing experiences and getting to know each other a bit more and debriefing. And, you know, it, it will be quite an intense day. So there'll be a lot to take in. There'll be a lot of reflection happening. Um, but we definitely want this to be fun as well. So, you know, um, and I'm sure Ruth and Carsten castle will just be such a great environment for us all to just let down our hair and, and have a bit of fun uh and then in the morning uh if you want to uh book some time with me you can um 15 minutes i can look at some work have a, a short portfolio review with you guys um and then it's check out and then it's off home to conquer 2022 <laughs> <laughs> love it a pr proper full-on program uh really I, I, lo I love the structure of it you know you've got that that really great welcome evening uh, where, where you get to meet everyone and um, you know um, you know find out where everyone's at and then theory in the morning and putting it into practice straight away. It's got it's going to be yeah. a, a a really intensive but um, you know well worthwhile couple of days. So uh, you know for, for the for the price targets uh, it, it's it's very 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 good value for many. So um, you know it, it, I would recommend anybody who can uh, make it in a couple of weeks time to. Uh, to get booked on uh, as soon as possible because they're, they're, we're very limited on on spaces uh only yeah, only 15 that. isn't it yeah that's right yeah only 15 so, so we are limited um but if it's successful there was a question here earlier if we're going to be running these events again um if 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 successful yes and you know we want it to be successful we want to support the industry we want to support you um so yes if it's successful then these will be running more frequently um but this is you know this is new for us um it's going to be exciting uh we want we wanted to make it successful we want to make this a place for you guys to come together um at least three three times a year so um fingers crossed Amazing, perfect. So I think that kind of rounds off the webinar quite nicely. Um, <laughs> we, we still doing this? Yeah. Awesome. So do you want to explain it? All right. So for for anyone who uh, dares to enter, <laughs> it's a very simple competition. Um, but uh, for those guys, uh, if you if you answer this correctly, then there is fifty percent of the the uh, ticket price. 
Um, wow. and there is three portfolio reviews to give away as well. So wow. um, if you want to put your answers um, into a chat box, probably on uh, Facebook now, because I think we're probably wrapping it up. Um, answer the question. Names go into a digital hat and we shall, uh, Colin and I will pull those names out. Amazing. So why don't we say uh, answer in the comments, uh, in the video comments, and then that'll keep the uh, the video rolling. Uh, yes. So, you know, which word is not listed as part of the 10 elements of photography? So the three options are styling, contrast, or composition. So um, put your answers in, in, in the, the comments and good luck. And don't forget, if you have a route around the, uh, the society's site, I'm sure you'll be able to... Uh, <laughs> find some inspiration inspiration to those answers and there's you know fantastic prizes to give away not only a, a whopping 50 percent off was it yeah 50 percent off the ticket wow. price 50 percent off ticket price so well worth entering just for, just for that alone if not there's there's free portfolio reviews uh yeah. for grabs as well so uh so make sure you uh and en enter the the competition fantastic way to to finish yeah. off the webinar I think there's some uh, questions, are there, Colin, that we should try and... Uh, I think you caught the one which was about the 2023 dates, uh, which, as you said, you know, hopefully, um, you know, the, the, the idea of the, the photography retreats is to, um, you know, they, this one's very much the starting block of what's to come, and it's, um, you know, um, I, I know from very early on um, discussions with you that you were... Very keen to 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 create these uh, spaces where people can um, have time and uh, you know the venue and the safety net of feeling very creative, and it's just not a one off. It, it's a rolling program that people can uh, either come to once or they can come to many of them, and um, you know just just use it as much as you want to to flex those uh, creative muscles. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Because, um, you know, it's good to have an environment like this, because when we go off into the uh, uh, working world, you know, with our clients, um, you know, we've got these um, we've got these little um, skills that we've picked up at the retreat to help us. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing well, we've certainly got a lot of answers coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it because I think that as well, you know, when we first start out as photographers, everything we're learning kind of very much on 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 the back foot. And um, by having this environment, it allows us to uh, have that creative space, like you say, to um, experiment with early on in our careers. So your photography will only, only get better with the retreat. Amazing. So I've put a, a link in the comments, uh, which we'll just bring up now. So, you know, if you uh, if you want to find out more about uh, the retreats as a whole, uh, have a look on the photographyretreat.co.uk website. Uh, also, if you've got any questions and you're watching this on maybe Catch-Up or, um, you know, or, or, or you've had a, th a question after we've uh, finished the live, then please do either put it in the comments or post it up in the uh, you know in, in an email to either me or Fiona, and we'll more than happily answer any questions that you've got about the retreats. Uh, and it would be amazing to see see some of you there. Yeah, we'll announce the uh, winner as well. Um, I think we'll. Uh, when should we do that? Should we do that next week sometime to give? Uh, let, let, let's do it on a week today. So it's uh, we, we're recording yeah. this on the Friday. So it will uh, we'll do it on the eighth eighth of April. We'll do it. Does that sound like a good plan? That sounds like a great plan. Amazing. So, um, yeah, so we keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think that's all we've got time for today. As I said, any questions after, then please feel free to either put it in the comments or reach out to me or Fiona, and we'll more than happily yeah. answer any questions you've got about the retreat or, or anything we've, we've, we've talked about or amused about today. So uh, yeah. please do feel to reach out for us. Uh, other than that, I think uh, it's been a really interesting conversation today, not just about the retreat, but about everything that we've kind of... Um, you know, just just touched upon, you know, it was a, a different style webinar, but a, a really enjoyable one and a really interesting one because, you know, we talked about all different things, about awards, what makes a great picture, about, you know, losing your mojo and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then just, you know, obviously to round all that off, that's why there's stuff like the photography retreat out there to, to help with all those things. Yeah, um, So if you hit any of those markers, then yeah. please do check out the website and, and see what it's all about. 
yeah absolutely 100 percent. amazing thank you so much for your time today and we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks time see you soon see you soon bye-bye